Hello and welcome. Today's webinar will cover exposed duct and free jet applications. My name is Jim Oswigan. I'm Chief Engineer at Titus and I'll be presenting today's program. I'll be joined later by Jose Palma, Senior Application Engineer at Titus, and Mark Costello, Product Manager for Grills Registers and Diffusers. As a panel, we will answer any questions you may have at the end of the broadcast. During this webinar, we will begin by defining the comfort goals as outlined by ASHRAE. We will illustrate the two basic types of air pattern and how they can be achieved by means of different styles of air outlets. We will define surface effect, also known as Coanda effect, and how it contributes to air outlet performance. We will look at the performance factors that affect comfort in the occupied zone. Finally, we will look at some specific applications where exposed outlets have been utilized. First, we will look at the comfort goals outlined by ASHRAE. The graph shown is from ASHRAE Standard 55. For Standard 55, the factors that determine occupant comfort include operative temperature, air motion in the occupied area, space humidity level, the activity level of the occupant, and finally, the clothing worn by the occupant. The ideal operative temperature is defined as when the individual does not feel any heat gain or heat loss from the area immediately surrounding them. An individual will begin to notice air motion at around 50 feet per minute. Higher velocities are permissible at increased temperatures. During heating operations, acceptable velocities are slightly lower. The upper limit for humidity is defined as a maximum dew point temperature of 62.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 60% relative humidity. For general office spaces, no lower humidity limit is required. Occupant activity level is defined as met rate or metabolic rate. An individual seated at a desk may be a met rate about 1.0, when standing or moving about the office, the rate increases to about 1.3. The appendix shows the rates for other levels of activities. The insulation value of clothing, or CLO rate, is between 0.5 and 1.0 for most office environments. 0.5, illustrated by the blue parallelogram, is summer attire, or an individual wearing shorts or skirt with no socks, sandals, and a short sleeve shirt or blouse. For 1.0, the red parallelogram, an individual will be dressed in more formal business attire, long trousers, long sleeve shirt, a jacket, or sweater. For today's business casual environment, most occupants would be more in the mid-range of the CLO value. ASHRAE 55 defines the occupied zone as the region normally occupied by people within a space, generally considered to be between the floor and six foot above the floor, and more than 3.3 feet or one meter from the outside walls, windows, or fixed heating, ventilating, and air conditioning equipment, and one foot from internal walls. The most recent version of Standard 55 adds the caveat of where there are no known occupants to this definition. ASHRAE Standard 55 is often referred to as the thermal comfort standard. It recommends that for good thermal comfort, the temperature difference between the neck and the ankle of a person should not exceed 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit. For standing occupants, this is approximately one degree Fahrenheit per foot of rise. For comparison, conventional overhead systems provide comfort through room air mixing. For this reason, these systems are also known as fully mixed systems. 
In a typical cooling application, 55 degree air is supplied from ceiling diffusers or high sidewall grills. The mixing created by the outlet discharge jet results in room air motion. This so-called secondary air motion is due to the entrainment of room air into the supply jet where the mixing occurs. Ideally, an overhead system results in a fully mixed air throughout the space with minimal temperature stratification. With a fully mixed system, the first thing the supply air does is pick up heat from the overhead lighting. This is one reason why we typically need a 20 degree differential temperature of our supply air. This webinar will examine air distribution where the outlet is not directly mounted into a surface ceiling. This photo shows a modern open plan office where comfort conditioned air is supplied through outlets mounted on the bottom of an exposed round duct. There is no ceiling surface available for air to follow or be directed to. We will examine the design criteria necessary to make this space comfortable. We will look at two types of air pattern and see how they can be utilized to give maximum comfort in the occupied space. First, we will look at the circular air pattern or sometimes called a radial air pattern. When air is discharged from an air outlet and distributed evenly in all directions, it is known as a radial air pattern. Since air is discharged evenly in all directions, the result is that it travels a shorter distance from the center of the outlet to a given terminal velocity, let's say 50 feet per minute. Circular flow patterns have higher induction of room air into the discharge jet and have a tendency to be so well mixed that when they reach the lower velocities, the air will curl back at the end of the jet toward the diffuser. Radial air patterns are well suited for VAV, variable air volume, cooling applications, but are not well suited for heating applications. This photo shows the outlets that will deliver a circular flow air pattern. It is easy to understand how the round-faced outlets will deliver radial flow, but the square outlets have design characteristics that produce radial air patterns with back pans that will even the flow into the corners as well. With the cross flow or directional flow air pattern, air is discharged with longer throw to an individual side of the diffuser. This illustration shows a four-way distribution, but this pattern could be three-way, two-way, or one-way with all the air going directional. With less room air induced into the air pattern, the jet travels a longer distance to a given terminal velocity. However, because there is less induction, there remains more cool air in the jet as it slows down, and at velocities less than 75 feet per minute, Buoyancy will separate the air jet from the surface of the ceiling, causing the possibility for drafts to occur in the occupied area below. We will also examine what happens to this air pattern when no ceiling is present. The diffusers shown on this slide are good examples of units designed to produce a cross-flowed air discharge pattern. Supply grills, when mounted on the side of a duct, or in a wall have air jet performance characteristics dependent on external conditions. When horizontal blades are present, they can be utilized to direct the air down or up. For cooling applications, the blades are usually straight out for a zero degree deflection or up 20 degrees to create a surface effect or a rainbow air pattern to minimize drop and excessive drafts in the occupied area below the six foot level. Creating surface effect will increase the throw and reduce the drop. The vertical blades can be adjusted to increase spread and shorten the throw which will also decrease drop. Adjusting the blades may increase sound and pressure loss. First, let's look at the effect of the horizontal blades on performance. When an air outlet is located within one foot of the ceiling surface, the blades can be left in a zero degree deflection pattern. 
the momentum of the air jet will create a negative pressure zone, also known as a coanda pocket, between the jet and the ceiling, drawing the air up to the ceiling surface. When the ceiling is located at a greater distance, let's say two to four feet above the outlet, the air can be directed upwards 20 degrees and that will create surface effect. When the air outlet is more than four foot below the surface, air can be directed up 20 degrees as well. No ceiling effect will be created, but the drop will be reduced due to the rainbow shape of the air pattern. The goal is to keep velocities above 50 feet per minute from penetrating the six foot level above the floor. The vertical blades can be used to control the distance the air travels before reaching 50 feet per minute. The 45 degree deflection creates a radial type air pattern that reduces throw and drop. This can also be helpful to avoid colliding airstreams when outlets are located directly across the room from one another. 45 degree deflection will add about 7 NC to the sound and about 70% to the total pressure loss. Most linear diffusers with plenums and T-bar diffusers produce a directional type air pattern. A radial air pattern can be produced by adding a spreader to the end cap or by using tapered ends on the plenum. This illustrates that regardless of what type of outlet we have, whether it's a ceiling diffuser, a sidewall grill, or a plenum slot diffuser, we can achieve both a radial type air pattern and a directional type air pattern. What are these surface effects we're talking about and how are they created? Let's look at that. The illustration on the left shows air being discharged into the room at an angle after being deflected by a kicker in the center of the diffuser. This air will remain at an angle discharge unless there is a horizontal surface adjacent to the unit which will offer a surface to create a coanda or a negative pressure pocket that will draw the air up into a horizontal position. The slot on the right side has a negative static pressure pocket between the angled blade and the horizontal lip. This will allow the negative pressure pocket to form inside the unit and air will be lifted into a horizontal discharge without need of horizontal surface outside the diffuser. The right side is ceiling independent. Some ceiling diffusers are designed with an internal coanda pocket in the back pan. In this illustration, as air passes through the diffuser and is deflected horizontally, the air pattern is set and secured because of the negative pressure pocket formed inside the diffuser. This air pattern will also remain horizontal after it leaves the confines of the diffuser. Both of these linear diffuser models are equipped with internal coanda pockets. The ice tongue arrangement on the left will form a pressure pocket as shown inside the blades. The barbell pattern controller on the right will form the pocket between the pattern controller and the horizontal diffuser leg. Both of these diffusers will provide a ceiling independent horizontal discharge air pattern. This smoke video illustrates a radial airflow pattern of a diffuser mounted in a ceiling. Notice that the air is flowing evenly from the corners of the diffuser at the intensity similar to the discharge from the sides of the unit. With an internal coanda pocket, this smoke video shows that the diffuser is still capable of a radius horizontal discharge even when mounted well below the ceiling surface. This unit is ceiling independent. This illustration shows a ceiling diffuser where air is discharged at an angle from the unit. Because of the presence of a horizontal surface adjacent to the unit, the external coanda pocket is able to draw the air up while surface effect is created outside the diffuser. This unit will not be ceiling independent. With no ceiling, there is a potential for drafts to occur in the occupied area if an angled air jet reaches the six foot level at velocities above 50 feet per minute. This may not be a problem for high bay ceiling applications. 
This smoke video shows the results of an exposed diffuser where there is no internal Coanda pocket. It is not ceiling independent. A lot of new construction is being designed with exposed ceilings. How do different diffusers work with and without ceilings? Coanda effect or surface effect. For the air jet to hold a horizontal airflow, a low pressure region must be created. The higher air pressure of the room holds the airstream to the ceiling. This is called a Coanda effect. Ceiling dependent diffusers require ceiling to create the low pressure area and hold the jet horizontal. Ceiling independent diffusers have internal low pressure areas and do not need a ceiling to hold the jet horizontal. The logo saying great for open ceiling installations is an indication that the, an outlet may be used without a ceiling surface. Now let's look at the performance impact of an exposed air jet. First, when any air jet is discharged from an outlet into a room, the momentum of the air jet will entrain room air into the air pattern, which will mix with the primary air and expand the jet. After a short first zone where the jet velocity remains the same and little room air is induced, the expansion process will begin. Beginning with the second zone, the jet will expand at approximately 11 degrees in both directions for a total of 22 degrees. Slot diffusers tend to have a more concentrated jet and have an extended second zone. Most other outlets induce more room air, which moves them quickly into the third zone. There are two rules of design when mounting an air outlet directly to the side of a supplied air duct. First, the velocity in the supply air duct should be less than 1,000 feet per minute. Less than 800 feet per minute is better. But why? Well, because rule number two is that the pressure loss across the outlet assembly must be at least 1.4 times the velocity pressure in the main duct, or the outlet will be an inlet and space air will be induced and carried down the duct when the main air duct velocity is 800 feet per minute. The velocity pressure is 0 0.04 inches, taken times 1.4 equals 0 0.056 inches of resistance at the outlet. If the outlet does not have at least 0 0.056 inches of resistance, again, it will be an inlet. If the velocity was 2,000 feet per minute, the velocity pressure would be 0 0.25 or a quarter of an inch. When taken times 1.4, this would mean that the external static pressure would need to be nearly four tenths of an inch. When adjacent outlets are spaced close enough to each other so that the expanding airstreams can join forces, the impact may result in longer throw. If two jets join at velocities of greater than 100 feet per minute, the result will be that the throw to 50 feet per minute will increase by 40%. If three outlets join forces, the combined jet will increase the throw by 70%. The result is the square root of the number of outlets times the throw. To keep outlets from joining, one example may be to set one for zero degree spread and 20 degree upward deflection, and set the next outlet for zero degree upward deflection but a 45 degree spread. Then the two jets will operate independently with one jet spread out and the other as a rainbow over the top. As we discussed earlier, surface effect will lengthen throw and minimize drop. The six most common air patterns for a supply grill are 1. Mounted 2 to 4 foot below the ceiling with zero spread and a 20 degree upward deflection to create surface effect. 2. 
mounted more than four feet below the ceiling but deflected 20 degrees upward to minimize drop. Three, zero spread and zero deflection mounted near the ceiling to create surface effect for longer throw and minimize drop. Four, zero spread and zero deflection mounted far below the ceiling but located high enough that drop is not a problem. Five, a 45 degree spread near a ceiling to limit both the throw and the drop. Six, 45 degree spread not near a ceiling will limit the throw and the drop will be less than it would be if it had a zero degree because of the radial pattern effect. Before we move on, let me say a word about grills equipped with airfoil shaped blades. When performance is an issue, an airfoil shaped blade will lower pressure loss by 40% and will reduce noise by 4 to 5 NC points. For sound sensitive projects where the size of the grill is restricted, look at an arrow blade option. Most catalog performance data is with isothermal conditions, no heating, no cooling. Since cooling can impact throw and drop, let's look at this impact now. What are the effects of cooling? To provide consistency, most catalog throw performance data is shown with isothermal air, no cooling, no heating. When mapping to assist with knowing the throw and drop from a cooling jet, there are six charts on the website or in the catalog engineering section similar to the one shown to estimate performance. The various charts represent results for cross flow jets with and without ceiling effect and radial jets with and without ceiling effect. The example shown is for an outlet with 20 degrees of cooling mounted within one foot of the ceiling discharging 300 CFM with an initial jet velocity of 600 feet per minute. The throw to 50 feet per minute will be 26 feet with a drop of 5 foot. To avoid excessive drafts in the occupied zone, this outlet should be mounted at least 11 feet above the floor. 5 foot drop plus 6 foot occupied zone. These charts are especially useful for determining the drop from a cooling jet to make sure the end jet does not penetrate the occupied zone at 6 foot above the floor. This chart summarizes the results of the six different types of mounting that I talked about in an earlier slide. With a 20 degree cooling, 300 CFM discharged at 600 feet per minute to a terminal velocity of 50 feet per minute. The throw is the distance traveled and the drop is from the center of the outlet. Figure 10 and 11 show that by deflecting the air upward to create surface effect, lengthens the throw and reduces the drop. Figures 12 and 13 show that the surface effective of a jet where the jet is located near a surface results in longer throw and less drop. Figure 14 and 15 show the surface effect of a radial jet that has longer throw and less drop. Finally, figure 12 and 14 show that a radial throw results in throw reduction of about 50% with less drop. If you add 6 feet to the drop number, it will tell you the minimum height above the floor that the outlet should be mounted to keep drafts from occurring in the occupied zone. When an exposed jet is discharged from an outlet, Induction of room air occurs at both the top and the bottom of the jet, resulting in shorter throw. This exposed jet will reduce the throw by 30% when compared to performance of data with surface effect. 
When using linear slot diffusers, attention should be directed to the notes at the bottom of the page or at the end of the section. The data page will be for the noted active length section such as 4 feet in this table. Doubling the length of an active section will increase throw by 40% and increase the NC by 3. You will never hear more than 10 foot of an active linear regardless of how long the unit is. To maintain stable airflow, an active section of an air jet in one direction should never exceed 10 feet. An 8 to 10 foot section should be separated by at least 2 foot of a blank space. A short of active section, such as 4 to 5 feet, can be separated by a blank space of 1 to 1 and a half foot. Another way to break up the air pattern is to alternate throw directions from left to right with less than 10 foot length in a section. We will conclude the webcast with some job site examples of exposed outlets for large open plan office spaces with partitions to divide the space into cubicles using ceiling diffusers for general air distribution provides adequate comfort and indoor air quality to the space below. Mix systems should be selected for noise value to provide speech interference without interfering with the normal activities of work. Many modern offices use an open, no ceiling design with air supplied through radial air pattern ceiling diffusers mounted to the bottom of round duct drops above the cubicle area. Other open designs use spiral ducts with grills mounted on the side of the duct. Fully mixed designs are generally the lower first cost for air distribution. Using air diffusers with an internal coanda pocket is suggested. This transit center with high bay ceilings is served by the linear bar grill along the sidewall above, with the lower area served by linear diffusers mounted in the lower ceiling. Note that when a diffuser is mounted like the linear shown, the short ceiling section can be used to establish the horizontal air pattern and when necessary the jet will act as an exposed jet after it reaches the edge. This is a large 10 story high atrium. The goal is to provide comfort for occupants and proper temperature and humidity control for the foliage. The outlets serving this area are shown next to the yellow arrow. Look at the white columns. Drum louvers are mounted in vertical columns. This atrium, again, is 10 stories tall. This exposed air duct is distributing air horizontally to service the loft as well as the area below. On the back side, angled ducts are serving the load on the glass of the exterior. This exposed duct application is used to serve a cafeteria area. This exposed ceiling grid is painted black with plaque face diffusers mounted in the ceiling grid with no additional ceiling tile. The outlet is shown above the yellow arrow. I have seen similar applications where radio flow ceiling diffusers were suspended above the grid discharging air horizontally with successful results as well. This library area is being served by linear bar grills shown by the yellow arrow from an intermediate height. Nose, these are fixed deflection grills with a 15 degree deflection available to direct the air upward if necessary. This bookstore is served by linear diffusers mounted directly onto the side of an exposed duct, also shown by the yellow arrow. These linear diffusers have adjustable pattern controllers. Just a word about areas or spaces with stadium style seating. Many times I see these outlets mounted on the side of a duct with the airflow directed downward at an angle similar to the seating. Keep in mind as we looked at before, most of these applications are cooling and buoyancy will create drop in the cooling jet. So by directing the air jet horizontally and letting physics take over, 
The front row occupants can be cooled without feeling direct air blowing on the back of their heads. This workout facility has air directed downward as well. In this case, since the occupants are exerting higher levels of metabolic rates of activity levels, the additional air velocity may be welcome. These ASHRAE handbook chapters offer some additional assistance with air distribution design. As always, it costs less to install a good design than to replace a bad design. The panel will now answer your questions.